an oscillator produces an oscillating signal at a certain frequency. Genesis enables you to easily synthesize 19 different oscillator designs. To start, go to New Item and create a new oscillator workspace. We'll start with the factory default values. Now you can see the oscillator definition window. Use the pull down menu to select an oscillator type. Genesis has 19 different types of oscillators. These can be broken up into four general categories. LC designs, surface acoustic wave, crystal, and some miscellaneous types like transmission line and negative conductance. For more information, press the type help button. This brings up the oscillator help menu. From here, go to oscillator types and you can see a table describing all the different types. It has type name, frequency range, stability, where 1 is unstable and 10 is very stable, tuning range, which is how far the oscillator can be tuned from the center frequency, phase noise, where 1 is noisy and 10 is clean, simplicity, where 10 is very simple and 1 is the most complex, and active device type. For more information on a specific type, just click the name. Here you can see an example schematic of that type, a short description, and all of the variables defined. For even more information, Genesis comes with a book, Oscillator Design and Computer Simulation. This is located in the Genesis Installation Directory, under the Help folder. Its file name is oscbook.pdf. This book has lots of information on subjects like oscillator synthesis, design, and simulation. Visit the associated webpage for more information on newer editions and sample workspaces for this book. Let's get back to the oscillator definition window. One of the things you can specify is the active device used by the oscillator. The default active device is just a generic nonlinear model. Click Browse to specify a specific device model. You could choose a part from this library, or you could load a different library. Genesis comes with some nonlinear SPICE libraries. For an example, here's the NEC SPICE library. I'll stick with the default model for now. You can also specify low and high oscillation frequencies, the oscillator loaded queue. Higher queue gives a steeper phase slope at the zero phase crossing. The remaining parameters are just active device specifications that you would get from a data sheet. Let's look at another type of oscillator. For example, the crystal pierce oscillator. For this type, you specify the center frequency and a pulling capacitor, which can be used to fine-tune the frequency. Genesis will automatically choose typical crystal values, but if you have a specific crystal, you can enter the values manually. The remaining parameters are active device specifications. Let's go back to the LC Colpitts design. This design is a feedback oscillator, so it's analyzed using the two-port method. Click Apply to synthesize the oscillator. You can see Open Loop Gain, Open Loop Match, and the oscillator schematic. Let's take a closer look at the schematic. Click the Bypass Parts button in the oscillator definition window. This shows you which parts in the schematic are used to bias the active device. In this case, it's a capacitor and an inductor. Let's take a closer look at the open loop gain plot. There's two traces on this plot. There's gain and there's phase slope. The narrower the gain, the steeper the phase slope is. The steeper the phase slope, the more stable the oscillator is. The oscillator will oscillate where the phase slope crosses zero degrees. 
Ideally, you want the phase to cross zero degrees at the gain peak frequency. Okay, now we'll look at the open loop match. This shows the input reflection and the output reflection. The better the match is, the better open loop gain the oscillator has. Okay, I'll pull up the oscillator definition window again. Check this box to generate a transient analysis. The transient analysis lets you see the oscillation and how long it will take to start. Now let's look at the optimization properties. We'll start out with the Goals tab. Here you can see goals that would make an ideal oscillator. Genesis optimizes the steepest phase slope zero crossing with the open loop gain peak at the desired frequency. The current error shows how far away the design is from the goals, and the optimization would stop if the error ever reached zero. Now let's look at the optimization variables tab. These are the component values that will automatically be adjusted during optimization. In this case, it's two capacitors. Okay, let's go back to the general tab. Press calculate now to run the optimization. Genesis adjusts the variables to optimize the design. Current and best error are shown. The error has stopped decreasing, so I'll stop the optimization. On the graph, you can see before and after optimization. The optimized response has sharper phase slope and gain peak. I'll clear the checkpoints to only see the new response. We can manually rerun the transient analysis after the optimization. You can see that it has a slightly slower startup time, but it's still fine. This design is complete, so let's take a look at something else. Genesis can also synthesize negative resistance or negative conductance oscillators. There are two negative resistance and one negative conductance. For an example, I'll pick T-Line UHF VCO. You can specify a maximum value for the tuning capacitor in this design. A smaller value will give better noise performance. You also specify the effective circuit capacitance. These types of oscillators are analyzed using the one port method. Oscillation will occur where phase crosses zero degrees. In summary, a good open loop oscillator design aligns the steepest zero crossing phase slope with the open loop gain peak. Based on this principle, you can now synthesize oscillators quickly using Genesis. Thank you.